Hello loves! If this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome! Thank you so much for being here. My name is Emily and today I am bringing you guys a list of products that I had to talk myself out of. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right on in here. If you see me looking down, I have my phone right here in hand to go over everything that I want to buy, but for some reason have tried to talk myself out of getting. So the first item on my list here that I really, really want, but have to talk myself out of is the new Violet Boss Flamingo palette. This palette retails for $45 and I believe you get 20 shades in this palette. Now, this color scheme is being done by a lot of people right now. We have the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette, we have the Kristen Dominique Lemonade palette, and we have the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Summer Vibes palette, and they all have a pretty similar color scheme. There's a lot of corals, a lot of oranges, a nice pop of yellow, and then some beautiful teal blues that we don't see very often in the makeup industry. So I do already have the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Summer Vibe palette. And it's one of my favorite palettes in the entire world. I freaking adore it and I use it all of the time. So I don't want to purchase the Violet Boss Flamingo palette because I already have the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Summer Vibe palette. But you know when you see a palette that you know you already have similar things at home, but you still really want it because it's just so beautiful and enticing and the color scheme is just so gorgeous to look at. Sometimes you get wrapped in by the packaging as well. That's kind of what's happening here. This color scheme is just giving me all sorts of feels right now. I love it so much. It's so pretty. You get some really beautiful teals, an emerald green, some purples. Of course, you get those beautiful corals, which are my absolute favorite kind of shadow. You get all sorts of beautiful colors in here. And the best part about the Violet Boss Flamingo palette, in my opinion, is that there is not a single freaking brown in this palette. So thank you, Violet Boss, for doing that because we always see beautiful, colorful palettes, but there's always like one or two or three mid-tone brown. I don't have a place for those in my makeup world over here. So I'm not going to get any use out of those. So it's really nice to see a brand put in just all colorful shades and a nice variety of light to deeper colorful shades. I'm like in love with this palette. I truly do want it, but because I already have the Give Me Glow palette, I don't think I need this. And you know, $45 for 20 shades is not a bad price at all. It's actually a really good price. And this palette really did kind of take me by surprise because Violet Boss has a lot of neutral palettes. I have a lot of palettes that have a bunch of neutrals with a few pops of like red and orange and warm tones like we always see in the beauty community. But this is just amazing. This is so colorful and so beautiful. And the swatches look freaking insanely gorgeous. But I just, I can't bring myself to buy it because I know that I already have some shades like this. <sighs> so unfortunately, I am having to talk myself out of it, but I literally have it in my Sephora cart right now with like all my samples picked out and my little point perk picked out, just ready to press pay because I really want this palette. So the next item that I've had to talk myself out of is the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer Powder in 001 Nude. This retails for a high ticket price tag of $56. And that's mainly the reason why I've had to talk myself out of this guy. It looks beautiful, let's be honest here. And so many people say they love it and say it's a great big gelée formula highlighter that is very metallic and high shine and it's just right up my alley. But it's just too damn expensive. $56 for a highlighter is just too damn much. I have almost took the plunge so many times. I have almost pressed pay and every single time I'm like, girl, stop it, take a deep breath, collect your thoughts, come back to earth and reality and just don't spend the 56 bucks because that's just an insane amount of money for one product. Now, I do also have the Wet n Wild Precious Petals Highlighter, which is $5, and a lot of people say that it is a basically spot-on dupe, so I do own that, and I feel like that is enough for me, and it does satisfy my want for this highlighter. So I have talked myself out of it, and this is one that I am okay with passing up, unlike the last one we talked about, the Flamingo Palette, because that like hurts my feelings that I'm passing it up. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be passing that one up. I'm just going to be honest here, guys. It is literally like 80 degrees in this room. No joke. No AC. No nothing. So my way of keeping cold is pouring ice cold water on my legs while I'm filming. 
works like a charm. So the next item that I have had to talk myself out of is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Lilac Geode. This retails for $38 and is described as a cool pink with a golden undertone. Now, when I show you guys this highlight, you are probably going to think it is absolutely beautiful because so many people say that this highlighter is one of their favorites and that it is so unique and so gorgeous and it's a really unique shade. It has a bit of a peachy kind of warm undertone, but it has more so of a cool kind of pinky purple base. The combination of those two different things make it a really interesting and unique color. And I have seen this in person. I have swatched it and held it in my hands and I even took it up to the register ready to buy at Ulta. And I was going to purchase Lilac Geode with one of the Ulta coupons, but I guess the Becca doesn't fall under the Ulta coupon umbrella. So I didn't want to get it if I wasn't going to get a discount on it because it's so expensive. Even if the discount is like a couple dollars, it still is justifiable in my mind. Another reason why I had to kind of pass this one up is because I'm not super obsessed and in love with the Becca highlighter formula. <gasps> I know, I know. That is like treason in the beauty community. Please do not come for me, okay? I'm sorry. I want to like it, but I'm just more so of a big chalet kind of girl. What can I say? I do like the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors, but they are a little bit powdery. And for that reason, they don't sit amazingly on my personal skin. Now on everyone else, they look freaking fantastic and fabulous, but on me, for some reason, they don't look as bright and as intense and as buttery on the skin as I would like them to, but I still like them, so don't get me wrong. But if it's not something that I'm absolutely obsessed with, then I don't want to pay full price for it. And because I could not get Lilac Geode with the Ulta coupon, I have decided to skip over this. I believe that I have made this in Mad Science Makeup as well. So for that reason, I do not think that I need to purchase this, but if for any reason it does go on sale or if I come across like a mini version, if they ever do that someday, then I will absolutely pick it up. The next item that I have had to talk myself out of multiple times is the Drunk Elephant Sea Firma Day Serum, which I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with. It is $80 and it is extremely popular here in the beauty community. Now I have seen before and afters of people using this product for about a month and the results are very noticeable. I have watched many reviews as well on the product. I've watched Kimberly Clark's review, Jen Loves Reviews just put out a review of this and of course Miss Stephanie Nicole has put out many times on her channel saying how much she loves this. So I do believe that this works and I will one day purchase it. Whether that's a sample or a mini size or the full size, one day I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this guy. But for right now and for my budget, your girl cannot be spending $80 on a serum. Now I know that skincare is really important and I am extremely interested in trying the Drunk Elephant line and this specific serum, but dude, that is so expensive, okay? And I need to pay my phone bill and other things before I worry about a serum. So one day I'm gonna give it a shot, but for right now I have to keep passing over it, even though I see it on Sephora.com and it taunts me every time and I always add it to my bag. It always gets removed because you are just too darn expensive for me right now, drug elephant. So the next item that I am always having to talk myself out of is BoxyCharm. This is $21 a month and it is a service that you get to your house. So essentially you get a box that's sent to your house filled with different makeup products. I believe that you get five makeup or beauty related items, sometimes six per month. And it is shipped to your house so you don't have to go out and buy stuff. And people get some really good stuff. I believe that all of the boxes are worth over $100 in the actual product value. And I enjoy watching people's BoxyCharm unboxings. I know some people think they're boring the house, but I really like them and I like seeing what people get. And I'm always like a little bit jealous that people are signed up for this because I want to be signed up for it too. It looks like fun, it looks really interesting, and it looks like a really good way to try new products. But I am a huge fan of Kimberly Clark here on YouTube. She's one of my favorite YouTubers and I adore and love her. And in one of her anti-hauls, she straight up anti-hauls any kind of subscription service that is delivered to your house with new products that you did not specifically go out to buy. Because the actual intention of companies like Ipsy and BoxyCharm and FabFitFun and whatever it may be, the actual intention is not to 
you know, introduce you to new products and have you try them and be like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so happy I found this. The actual motive is to give you a little taste of the product and then when you run out, you now have a new product that's been added into your regimen. So oftentimes if it's a skincare item and you start using it and you use up all of it, now you have a new item that you're gonna go out and buy every single month or however long it takes you to go through the item. And Kimberly Clark described this as almost like an enabling service because it enables you to be introduced to all these things that you would have never really been introduced to before. And therefore, you're gonna end up spending more money in the long run because you're introduced to all these new products that you're probably going to get hooked on. So that is why I have not bought BoxyCharm. I almost bought it so many times before I started watching Kimberly Clark a while ago, and she convinced me to not buy it. But that doesn't mean that I still don't want it, and that doesn't mean that I still do not wish that I had it because I truly do want BoxyCharm. I used to get Ipsy every single month, but I found that I wasn't really enjoying all of the products from Ipsy, and even though that one is only $10, you are only getting sample-sized products. With BoxyCharm, you pay $21, but you get full-size items. So it's almost a better deal just to go with BoxyCharm, and they tend to give you more luxury, more well-known kind of high-ticket items in BoxyCharm. So to me, BoxyCharm is the better of the two. I actually convinced my coworker to switch from Ipsy to BoxyCharm, charm. Sorry, Ipsy. But she's been super impressed with everything so far and she seems happy with it. And seeing her get the box and hearing what she's getting out of the box makes me want it even more. But I just can't do it because I'm not about to enable myself into this world of products that I wouldn't have even known about if I didn't receive them in BoxyCharm. So I'm going to save my money here, but I do definitely want BoxyCharm and maybe someday, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll go ahead and get it. The next item that I always have to talk myself out of is the P. Louise eyeshadow base. This retails for $10 in Great British Pounds, which translates to about $14 USD. This is an eyeshadow base that is from the makeup artist P. Louise or Paige Louise. She has a really popular Instagram account and she does amazing makeup artistry. I don't understand how they get those eyeshadows so beautifully blended. She does an amazing job with makeup, but she recently recently came out with her own makeup line and it is based in Britain so the $10 is based off of the Great British Pound. So she does ship to the US but shipping is like $14 or something. I don't remember the exact amount. When I checked yesterday on the website, it said $10, but that was in the Great British Pound. So I'm pretty sure that shipping is $14. So I'm basically paying for an entire new eyeshadow base just to get it shipped over to the US. So. I'm not really on board with that. I have heard good things about it, but I don't really want to pay double the price just to get it sent over to the US. And I understand customs can be a giant pain in the butt, but I just, I just can't bring myself to spend the extra money to have an eyeshadow base shipped over here. Now, if you are in Britain, I think the $10 price point is fantastic. And I've heard great things about the base. It looks amazing. It looks very full coverage, very sticky, very long wearing for eyeshadows, but I just, I can't do it. That's just too expensive. And I definitely still want it. And I still have a little tinge of jealousy every time I see someone use it on Instagram or on YouTube. I always have a little bit of jealousy because I want it. Okay. But I'm just not going to buy it because that's too expensive, my friends. The next palette that I have almost bought several times, but always convinced myself not to, is the Blush Tribe Malika palette. This palette retails for $22.99 in Great British Pounds, which translates over to about $26 USD. So this palette is obviously right up my alley. We have a bunch of different shades of coral here and some more neutral shades to kind of balance everything out. I don't care about the neutral shades. All I care about are those beautiful corals, but as we all know, if you are not new to my channel, then you are probably fully aware that I am obsessed with coral eyeshadow and I have more than anyone would ever need. So for that reason, I have just been skipping over this palette, even though I have added it to my cart many a times. I always end up not taking the plunge because I have these eyeshadows, but they're beautiful and I want them. And side note, I actually went ahead and purchased a quad from them yesterday that was only $10. And the quad is beautiful and it is 
so vibrant. You get an orange, a yellow, a pink. It looks amazing and I cannot wait to try it. I have been so curious about Blush Tribe because I hear that they're actually really great and they have really nicely formulated matte colorful shades. So they're right up my alley and this is way better of a deal for me because I might already have colors like this but it was only 10 bucks and this is a really nice color range in my opinion. So the next item that I have to talk about here is the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette, which retails for $45. Now I have done two, maybe even three videos on my channel where I am talking about the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette. And I was originally going to buy this, but the more I looked at it, the more I didn't really see myself ever really getting use out of it because there's just so many shimmers and I'm not a huge shimmer person. And the mattes are not really colorful, especially for something called the Lemonade Palette. I want some nice lemonade shades, and I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. But, you know, I just, I wasn't really feeling it after I actually looked at it and really thought about the types of looks I would do with this palette. Now, I'm actually pretty happy that I have decided to skip over this palette because she has unfortunately had some formula issues with this specific palette. Now, she has released the Latte palette in the past, and that palette was phenomenal from what I can tell and from the reviews I've watched. Seems like people were really feeling that palette, but the Lemonade palette seems to have some inconsistencies. A lot of these shimmer shades are getting hard pan after you literally swatch it. I think they are too hardly pressed and people aren't really being able to pick the product up on a brush. So that's a pretty big problem. But her customer service is responding to everyone and they are handling the situation wonderfully. They are refunding people and sending out new palettes to people who have had issues with the palette. So I commend her on that. Having good customer service is a huge deal in the makeup industry. So I'm really happy that they're taking care of it, but I am really happy also that I skipped over it because I'm just not going to get a whole lot of use out of it and after really thinking about it, I just don't really need this palette. The next item that I have had to talk myself out of is the Lancome Macaroon Blush Duo. This retails for $40 and you get one blush and one sponge or you can pick up the set of four for $70. So you get two sponges and two macaroon blushes. Now these are cream blushes, but the thing that makes them really interesting and cute and enticing to me is that these are literally shaped like little macaroons or macaron. I know I'm saying that wrong and I know someone's going to get on me for it. I believe it's a macaron, but I don't have the accent and I'm not 100% sure, so we'll just call it macaroon, okay? But in these little sets, you get one cream blush that is shaped like a macaroon and then you get one little sponge that is also shaped like a macaroon and it just looks like this cute little set of little macaroon cookies and I love the concept of it. The colors are right up my alley. They are corals, they are hot, they are vibrant, they are beautiful. And I am dying to get this in my collection. But the one thing that always stops me is the $40 price tag. Now, if this was a powder blush, I would have bought both of them by now. I am obsessed with blush. I love coral blush. I'll spend $40 on a blush, even though that sounds insane. So if these were powder blushes, I would have both of these in my hands right now. But because they're cream blushes, I am gonna go ahead and skip over them because I don't know how to use cream blush and I don't wear foundation, I don't wear cream products really. I wear concealer, but that's it. And I just wear it under my eyes and on my nose and nowhere else. So the idea of having cream on my cheeks like gives me anxiety and freaks me out a little bit. And I know myself and I know how weird I am and the whole time that I would have these cream blushes on my cheeks, I would just be paranoid throughout the day thinking that I'm going to wake up with a bunch of zits where the blush was. I'm just weird like that and I just have a phobia of like cream products just chilling on my face all day. I don't know why that is, but it's just a weird thing about me. So for that reason, I have had to skip over these, but if these were powder blushes, I would own them. So Lancome, if you ever see this, please come out with powder macaroon blushes because I will be your biggest customer. So the next item that I have had to talk myself out of is the Visart Editorial Bright Palette. This is an absolutely beautiful, all colorful matte palette. You get a nice variety of different shades of basically the rainbow, but they're all very bright and unique in tone. And I think the palette is absolutely stunning. I think you could do so many looks with this palette. I would get so much use out of this palette, but it's $80. So your girl's not going to be getting this palette anytime soon. I do plan on picking this up during the VIB sale. I think that would be a good time to pick up any Visart palette, to be honest, because they're so expensive. 
But this one just really calls my name every time I go on the Sephora website. I really do want it, but I'm just gonna have to be patient and wait because one day I'll get it and I will get it on sale and it will be worth the wait. The last item that I have had to talk myself out of many times that I keep putting in my Sephora cart and taking out of my Sephora cart is the Pat McGrath Mothership Submersive La Vie en Rose palette. This palette retails for $55 and you get six different shades of eyeshadow. Pat McGrath is a luxury brand. You are going to pay a pretty penny if you want to get her products. But I think this is a pretty decent price for eyeshadows from her. Her typical eyeshadow palettes, I believe you get 10 or 12 shades in them. I'm not 100% sure, but they are $129. So your girl's not ever gonna go anywhere near those. But this is a lot more reasonable for me. I have spent $55 on palettes many times and I prepare to in the future as well. So this is not a price point that is out of my price range. But the thing that keeps stopping me is the fact that you get only six shades for the $55 price point. Now I do understand Pat McGrath is luxury, like I just said, eh, but it's so expensive for just six shadows. Now this is definitely something that I wanna pick up during the VIB sale as well because I love the colors. I think they're beautiful. I love the packaging. I have heard the formula is incredible and I wanna try it, okay? I am a makeup connoisseur over here. I have to try Pat McGrath eyeshadows. I just have to, but I wanna get it on sale because it's just, it's too expensive for what it is. So I'm holding off on it as well, kind of like the Bizart palette, but I have considered purchasing this at full price so many times. I have almost pressed the pay button on the website too many times. So I just moved this to my loves list to keep it on the back burner and one day, I will have it in my hands. But it is hotter than a flaming Hot Cheeto in here. I am literally burning up. So that is gonna be it for this video. Please do let me know down in the comments below what are some items that you constantly want and you find yourself putting into your Sephora cart or your Ulta cart, but for some reason you end up not purchasing them. I am really curious because I love watching videos like this. Many people on YouTube have done videos like this before. I believe that maybe Samantha March has and I know that Liv Loves Her Makeup has as well. So please do check out their videos on this topic too. But I really enjoy kind of looking back at what I want and deciding if I need it or not. And thinking twice about an item or a product really helps me to limit my spending as well because then I start thinking logically and I'm not just acting on a whim. But with that, I am going to go ahead and close out this video. I do hope that you consider subscribing if you have not already. I am doing all sorts of makeup goodness here on this channel. So if you are not already subscribed and you would like to be, I would love to see you hit that button down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a big thumbs up and hit that notification bell down below. I hope you are having an absolutely fantastic and wonderful and air conditioned day wherever you are. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye.